Part of the role of Kukum is to give encouragement, to give teachings, to help spirits grow. So I want to do that tonight. I want to give words of encouragement. And I first have to start off with some, some kind of information, which is not very encouraging, but you need to know it first. So I'm wearing this Madonna thing. Is it working? Would I, I don't have the cones to go, if anybody remembers Madonna. But we'll see how it works. So some of you have prob some of you have heard about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, have you not? And you have heard about the legacy, the sad legacy of the residential schools. So I'm going to talk a bit about that. And so far, it's been so upbeat. It's you know, it's been like a party, speed dating. Everybody's getting up here real fast and connecting with you. So I don't want to bring it down, but we need a little bit of information. So. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission came out with a report in May, the end of May uh, 2015. And it followed quite a long process where it gathered evidence and information and testimonies from survivors and children of survivors of the residential schools. So think of how many generations that involves. So for over a century, the central goals of Canada's Aboriginal policy were to eliminate Aboriginal governments, ignore Aboriginal rights, terminate the treaties, and through a process of assimilation, cause Aboriginal peoples to cease to exist as distinct legal, social, cultural, religious, and racial entities in Canada. Simply, this is cultural genocide. Cultural genocide is the destruction of those structures and practices that allow the group to continue as a group. Much of what we've been saying today is, is about what it takes to become a group in a good way. Much of what we've talked about today talks about how we as human beings need to be a group how we're interrelated, how we need to be connected, how we need to feel good in each other's presence, how we need to help people feel good and accepted in our presence. We see the effect on the brain. People have talked about it all day. We see the effect on the behaviors that result from the damage to the brain. Families were disrupted to prevent the transmission of cultural values and identity from one generation to another. The federal government has estimated over 150,000 students attended Canada's residential schools. This was not to educate us, but it was purposeful to cut off the link with our culture and our families. You know, the antithesis of what we're talking about today. We're talking about what creates so much trauma, so much dis-ease. This was the goal of, the, of Canada's Aboriginal policy. Government records are evidence of this goal. Um, John A. Macdonald wrote at one point, Indian children should be withdrawn as much as possible from parental influence. The last residential school, federally supported residential schools, remained in operation till the 1990s. What they were telling us as a race is that we weren't good enough. We weren't just telling one person. They were telling our, our grandmothers and our grandfathers, our mothers, our fathers, our aunties, our uncles, our brothers, our sisters. We weren't good enough. And today we've seen some of the impact of that message and the ways it's, and sometimes it's subtle. There is nothing subtle about this. I think you would agree. Around the 1990s, there was, 96 actually, the report of the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples. It urged Canadians to begin a process of reconciliation 
Because it lasted so long, there were so many generations. Imagine how many generations of parents, how many generations of traumatized people. You left your home when you were, oh, let me think, of, my Auntie Martha was six years old. And she was picked up in a cattle truck with the other children and shipped to Onion Lake Residential School. She said apologetically, I was such a sissy. I, I must have cried for two weeks and the staff just got fed up with me. So they took me to the, the fence that separated the boys from the girls and they let me see my brother for 10 minutes. And that was to do her for the year and to shut her up. What happened, the way the schools were organized, the, the goals of the schools, was trauma, multi-generational trauma. You know, you have parents who are, you have mothers who are explosive, who are angry, seemingly for no reason. You have fathers who are unavailable. You have people without a sense of self-direction, of self-determination. You have people with with no sense of connection, of not knowing how to connect anymore, or maybe not wanting to connect. I'm not good enough to connect anyway. You had people shut down, you had people self-medicating, all the things we've talked about today. And it went on for over a hundred years. My mother, my father, my aunties, my uncles, my spouse, his siblings, they were this is not ancient history. This is us now in the present. It sounds so overwhelming. I warned you it would be hard, that we'd have to go through this hard information together. But the things you're doing here, the things you're learning at this conference, what you're learning about trauma, what you're learning about how it happens, what you're learning about how it's not a the things that are happening are not a choice. It's not a weakness of character. It's not a cultural weakness. Because we were told that on a cultural level. It's not a racial gene or something that make us defective parents, defective friends, defective lovers. What you're doing here is going to help us all heal. I want you to know that I believe that the trauma the damage for the residential schools, we're all suffering from it. I don't just mean my biological community. I mean all of us. I mean you, all of you that are here, all of North America suffering from this. We all need to recover together. This has meant that we didn't have relationships with each other. I talk to people who say, well, I knew there was a residential school over there. We, you know, we would see the people once in a while coming and standing, trying to catch a glimpse of their kids. But, you know, we never thought of it much. They were shadowy people who moved on the, the fringes of our, of our lives, of our own family lives, of our own connections. We lost out on all of these opportunities to be connected to each other, me with other Canadians, my father, my, my mother, my spouse, connections with other Canadians. We're suffering from that, and what you're doing here is going to help us all heal. So I know it seems overwhelming, but I think you're moving toward, you're moving toward a solution. You're moving toward healing. You're learning more about your own sense of connection, your own need for connection. So, I'm not, a, I'm not a researcher, I'm a person who has just lived these questions. I'm not, I, I can't give you any definitive answers. But I do know there's hope, and I do know that what you are doing at this conference meeting together is going to heal all of us. It's not just an Indian problem, it's all of us who are heartbroken. And I, you know, all of you have come, I thank you for coming. Miigwech.